tipsy tuesday time again and this one is on one of my favorite topics of discussion and that is para function two words that we use so synonymously with each other clenching and bruxing are they the same remember friends clenching and bruxing are two very different patho functions and it is very important for a clinician to understand and differentiate between them when planning complex full mouth reconstructions let me help you understand the difference between them this person right here friends is a clencher each time you see that masseter and the temporalis bulge you should know this individual is patho functioning in the vertical dimension which basically means this patient's teeth are in maximum intercuspation and the patient is constantly just in a vertical envelope of function pressing the teeth together which basically means in a clencher the mandible does not shift position it is a static patho function which means the patho function is in a vertical plane only now if we look intraorally these are the findings that we typically see when we're looking at front teeth or anterior teeth you will see angular attrition which means the lower anteriors will be attrited on the labial surface the upper anteriors will show palatal attrition it's not flat attrition it's angular attrition which is classic to a clencher also very commonly seen in a clencher in the anterior is a deep overbite you will see the lower incisors are worn down and the upper anterior seem like they've grown and collapsed the bite completely resulting in a very deep anterior overbite when you look at the back teeth now this is classic to a clencher when you look at the back teeth you will see attrition selectively present on the functional cusps so look here as i zoom into this picture you can see the buccal cusps are attrited there are dentin small defects that are created but look at the non functional cusp the non functional cusp is perfectly intact so classic to a clencher is attrition selective to the mandibular buccal cusps and the maxillary palatal cusps that's because they are patho functioning in the vertical dimension so only selective attrition is seen over functional cusps of posterior teeth okay so that is classically a clencher two other features that you see in a clencher almost universally is a linea alba which is a hyperkeratotic band that you see on the cheek mucosa and you will also see indentations of the teeth on the lateral borders of the tongue it may seem like there's macroglossia but it's not true macroglossia this is a patient who is a clencher very common these patients also have obstructive sleep apnea now let's look at a bruxer what is classic to a bruxer when you look at anterior teeth of a bruxer you will see flat attrition which means attrition that's not angular in nature but it's completely flat and typically anterior teeth in, are in an edge to edge contact remember in a clencher you see a deep anterior overbite in a bruxer you will see edge to edge contact and flat attrition this is not just in the anteriors but when you look at posteriors as well the posteriors do not show selective attrition on functional cusps but you will see attrition that's present on functional and non functional cusps so who is a bruxer a bruxer is basically someone who patho functions in a horizontal dimension which means it's a cow like bite but when you talk about a clencher the clencher is an alligator bite that is patho function in the vertical dimension a bruxer is patho functioning in the horizontal dimension a quick tip here if you see flattened canine tips which means the canine tips if they show flat attrition do not think twice this is a bruxer now from my book which is master volume i have shared a picture here which differentiates a clencher from a bruxer most important parameter for me as a clinician is noting post reconstruction prognosis for a clencher is very good but for a bruxer the prognosis is guarded basically what i'm telling you is when you do a full mouth for a clencher the possibility of failure significantly decreases but when you are treating full mouth for a bruxer 
be very careful. Porcelain fractures, food lodgements, dislodgements, all of these issues primarily manifest in a bruxer. Why is that? Remember, a bruxer is creating non-axial loading. That's why everything is weak. A clencher is compressive loading. Body is very strong in compression. Porcelain is very strong in compression. Implants are very strong in compression. So failure in a clencher is far less. Also remember in a clencher, your anterior guidance is fairly intact. In a bruxer, the anterior guidance is completely messed up. They come edge to edge. So when you are planning a full mouth reconstruction for a clencher, do not worry about leaving your anterior overlap quite deep. So what I'm telling you is you can leave your case with a deep anterior overbite provided that your patient is a clencher and give good intensity contacts on your anterior teeth. But when you are restoring a bruxer, be careful. Keep your anterior guidance as shallow as possible, which means do not deepen the bite, but keep the anterior guidance or the vertical overlap minimalistic and keep a slight amount of gap between the anterior teeth so that the patient does not fight and break the prosthesis away. Very, very important for long-term stability and success in a full mouth reconstruction case. Now friends, very, very happy to share with you that I now have my full mouth reconstruction course present online. You need not travel to Mumbai to learn from me of a full mouth reconstruction. All you need to do is go on to mikeducation.com. Use the promo code UFIRST and get discounts for my online full mouth reconstruction course. Over 20 hours of content which will blow your mind away, give you the confidence that you need to treat your next full mouth reconstruction case. Friends, with that, I close my Tipsy Tuesday for today. As always, go ahead, double tap like this. Do comment, share it with your friends so that we can make dentistry that much more predictable and that much more fun. One Tuesday at a time.